All right, back for number nine, units of measurement. So there's two um, units of measurement for radiology. There are traditional units and international units. And for ART, you need to know the international units um, or the SI units. Um, so just a plug for Clover Learning. Um, there, a lot of these images are from them. I highly recommend it. All right, all radiation measurements are going to fall into two categories. So radiation in air and radiation in tissue. So for radiation in air, it's exposure and air kerma. And then radiation in tissue is absorbed dose, equivalent dose, and effective dose. Exposure is a direct measurement of the ionizations in the air molecules. It is the number of ionizations in air, not the energy. Um, it's measured at the ion chamber. There's no special unit for exposure, and it's calculated in coulombs per kilogram. So if you increase intensity, you're going to increase the ionizations and increase the exposure. If you increase MA, which increases the number of photons, increases ionizations, increases exposure, if that makes sense. Um, air kerma measures the energy of ionizations in air related to exposure. So exposure is the number, air kerma is the energy. Um, unit of measurement is the gray, expressed as GY, and there's an A here, A indicates air. One gray equals one joule per kilogram, and it's described as the energy absorption per kilogram of tissue irradiated or mass. Kerma stands for kinetic energy released in matter, material. Okay. Coulombs per kilogram is sometimes used to measure exposure, though its preferred unit is air kerma. All right, so exposure is number of ions, air kerma, energy. The absorbed dose is the energy that's absorbed in matter per unit mass. The SI units are gray or milligray, which is equal to um, one joule of energy per kilogram. So in radiology, we're looking at doses that are much lower than gray. So we usually talk about milligray, um, which is you know one one thousandth of a gray. And then there's absorbed dose in tissue. So you'll see the GY and then a T. T stands for tissue. Um, so for your patient, you can have um, the photoelectric absorption and the Compton scattering. Those together equal the absorbed dose. When you increase your MA, it increases the intensity. It increases the exposure air kerma. So it increases the absorbed dose as well. So if you increase your MA, you're going to increase your patient dose. To reduce it, you can increase distance. So anytime you um, increase your distance, you lower the intensity, you lower the exposure, and you lower the absorbed dose. <clears throat> the absorbed dose in tissue will vary, right, based off of the tissue thickness and the anatomic number that we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, there is either going to be low, moderate, or high absorption, and the bone is the high absorption. Um, air is low, and then the tissue in here would be moderate. The equivalent dose is a calculated dose. You have to multiply the absorbed dose by a radiation weighting factor. Um, it counts for the higher biological effectiveness of certain types of radiation. So they get worse <laughs> or more um, effective. Um, so how harmful are x-rays compared to alpha particles? So x-rays, gamma rays, and um, beta particles are all a weighting factor of one. Okay, so if you can remember, x-rays for us are one. Um, the slow neutrons are 5, fast are 10, and alpha is 20. So alpha is the worst. When you're trying to remember this, um, try to just remember x-rays are 1. So what you're going to do is multiply um, the absorbed dose, which is your um, gray, and then your radiation weighting factor, so WR, 
is going to give you your equivalent dose, which is in sieverts. The effective dose is a calculated dose that takes into account the type of radiation that the um, patient was exposed to, equivalent dose, as well as what part of the body was irradiated. So it's expressed in sieverts. Um, down here is the calculation. So uh, similar to that of the one we just talked about, but gray weighting factor, um, tissue weighting factor. Um, the tissue weighting factors are over here. You can see um, the different types of tissue and what their weighting factors would be. Do I think you need to retain this? And then do I think you're gonna be asked to calculate this out? No, no, I do not. Um, do I think you should know um, kind of which one is on the low end and which one is on the higher end as far as weighting? You might wanna, um, you know, put that in your brain. Um, but as far as basics, we wanna know what's more radiosensitive. And if we can kind of think of that, so radio, radio sensitivity is going to increase, um, you know, as we're going into this darker color here, less radio sensitive is your lighter. So you can see lungs and colon, and then thyroid, liver, bladder, brain, bone, skin are the least radio sensitive. And then agencies involved in the radiation protection um, recommendations. So it's either the International Commission, which is um, Radiation Protection Worldwide, or the NCRP, National Council on Radiation Protection and Measurements, and that is radiation protection and measurements in the US. Um, this chart, NCRP chart 160, addresses radiation exposure from all sources to people living in the US. So if you see um, this amount is background radiation, space radiation, um, CT is over here at 24%, and then um, nuclear medicine is at 12%, interventional radiography, um, you know, basic internal background radiation, things like that are um, listed on here as far as medical imaging types and um, different areas. So the NCRP 160 is um, sources of radiation and exposure from all sources. And then the NCRP also outlines for us dose limits, and we'll go further into that um, in a few weeks, but um, it sets annual dosages for occupational workers. So my dose level per year um, is should not exceed 50 millisieverts. It specifies um, lens of the eye versus um, extremities, what I'm allowed to get. Then they have public exposure per year. And um, if they have continuous exposure or infrequent exposure. So the infrequent exposures can be 10% of um, what the occupational worker can be. It specifies dosages for the embryo and fetus and um, the total dose versus a month dose it specifies. One of the ones I want you to make sure you know as students for ART is um, the effective education and training exposure. So you as students, um, your annual dose should not exceed one millisievert. And I think 